everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, the Facebook and Instagram ads workshop for contractors. I'm really excited that I got the opportunity to put this workshop together for all of you. My name is Jenny Silvers. I am a marketing manager here at Surefire and I lead the social media advertising for our company. You can see all those ads behind my picture there, all created by me. So before we get into the presentation, I wanted to tell you quickly a little bit about Surefire and who we are. We're located in Northern Virginia and we help small businesses drive visibility through all channels on the web so they can continue to grow their business with ease. And our mission here is to educate businesses on a variety of topics to help you succeed and to help the industry grow. And we want to know who you are as well, so let us know where you're joining us from today. And you can do that by using the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. So a few quick reminders before we get started. You will get the recording of this chat on Thursday, and you can ask me questions, make comments, etc., cetera, in the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Steve's here right next to me, and he's going to help me out with any of your questions throughout the presentation. And because you're on the webinar with us right now, you do have a chance to win the Google Home Hub that we'll be giving away at the end of the talk. So stay tuned until the end, because that's when I will be announcing the winner. So let's get started. Here's our agenda today. I'm going to walk you through a proven strategy at, to succeeding with Facebook and Instagram advertising, broken down into two different ad types. And then I'll talk to you about your targeting options, followed by how you should approach the creative elements of your ads. After that, I'll finish up with a few tips for remarketing. And I know Facebook ads does have a lot of options, but my goal here is to get you comfortable with all the options that they offer so that you can have great results from your advertising spend. So there's a lot of good reasons to invest both time and money into Facebook ads. All of those options that they offer, while overwhelming, also offer immense customization and creative control over your ads. The targeting and retargeting options available through the Facebook ad system is exceptional. And in a recent study released, we learned that Facebook users click on eight ads a month, which is a lot, and 75% of Instagram users will take action after seeing an ad. And this could be clicking your ad, liking or commenting on it, or even just visiting your website for information. That's a lot of people. So Facebook ads are also connected to Instagram ads. Facebook bought Instagram a while back now, probably almost two years ago. But you can run both ads in a single campaign, which is going to connect you to audiences on both platforms. So Instagram is going to have a younger audience. So you'll probably reach homeowners who are in the 25 to 35 age range on Instagram more so than you will on Facebook. Facebook's demographic tends to skew a little bit older, 35 to 65. And the audience on Facebook of those above 65 has increased as well. So because of this, when I refer to Facebook ads throughout the workshop, I'm also referring to Instagram ads. It's just an audience network option that you can click on or click off. So since the biggest goal of Facebook ads is to put your business in front of homeowners, it's really a great advantage to have both of these accessible through one platform. And Facebook's also connected to Messenger, which will come up a little later on. I'm going to touch on that. And while some people worry about the cost of Facebook ads, it's still pretty affordable compared to some alternatives, like Google ads, print ads, TV ads especially. This is particularly true when your ad campaigns are given a high relevance score from Facebook, and that means Facebook believes your ad is a good fit for your target audience, and your cost per click will decrease proportionately. So to get started, the first thing you have to do is to make sure you have a Facebook page. If you haven't created one for your business, here are the instructions. Take a screenshot now, or we can send you something telling you how to do this. It's important to make sure you have all of your correct business information on the page. It's one more online listing that will help your SEO and help you appear more in local search results. It's also important for you to be active on this page. Have regular posts and getting reviews and recommendations on Facebook. It all goes to building trust with potential customers who are going to find your business online. Next up, make sure you have an Instagram profile. And make sure it's set up as a business profile. To do this, you have to set up your profile as an individual first. And once that do that's done, you can go through your settings and switch it to your business profile. This allows your profile to have a call now or a contact us button. Um, just easier for people who are finding you on Instagram to actually contact you as a business. So one more step before you can start creating ads 
is to start a Facebook Business Manager account. Once you set it up, you'll be able to claim your business page as the quote-unquote owner, and you'll be able to add other people in your company or anyone you work with for the page to the Business Manager account without giving them direct page access. From there, all you need to do is all you need to do to start the ad account is to input your payment method, and then you can start your first ad. So let's get started with developing the strategy. Creating high converting Facebook ads isn't actually as difficult as it sounds or as it may be for some people who don't develop a strategy before they start. To make that happen, I'm gonna break this up into two steps. These are the steps that I follow, awareness and lead generation ads. Before we get into that, I wanna show you the different ad types and objectives that Facebook gives you. The very first thing you'll do when creating your campaign is to choose your objective. And it's important to choose the right one based on your strategy because Facebook will optimize ad placements based on your objective. In some cases, the right objective can lower your cost per click and improve your results. So the ones I want you to focus on here are highlighted in red. Traffic ads, lead generation ads, messages, I'll touch on that a little bit, and conversions. So depending on the objective you choose, these are the ad types that you'll get. A traffic ad or a conversion ad, those are the objectives, will become a website click ad, so the first one you see here. These will send people to a page off of Facebook where they can either fill out a form, read a blog post, whatever the landing page has for them to do. And they're optimized to show people who Facebook knows are more likely to click on ads or more likely to convert from an ad based on your objective there. Facebook and Instagram track the behavior of its users so that when they, so that's where they get this info. Facebook tracks the behavior so they know who's more likely to click on an ad based on who's clicked on an ad in the past. Lead gen ads will be an ad that shows a Facebook lead form. I'm gonna go into this into lead forms into a little bit more detail and show you what they look like. But basically it's a form on Facebook where the user doesn't have to leave Facebook. And Facebook's really able to optimize to people that have filled out these forms in the past and are more likely to fill out a form from an ad. Messenger ads are the last type and they're exactly what they sound like. These ads will open a conversation in Facebook Messenger and I do want to add that you can't run Messenger ads. So each ad type will give you the option of creating these three creative types. A single image ad, carousel ad, or a video slideshow ad. They're pretty self-explanatory, but I will say that for this industry, carousel ads and video ads are going to convert at a much higher rate. It's true for any business, but especially for the home services industry. So for each campaign that you're going to create, you need to first ask yourself, what product, what services am I specifically promoting right now? What is my audience's pain point? What objectives will they have to click on my ad? What stage of the funnel are they in exactly? So if you're targeting people that you already have in your sales funnel, you want to know where they are. Have they had a meeting yet? Have you already provided them an estimate? What are you trying to say to them? And importantly, do you want leads? brand awareness, site traffic, sales, something else. Mostly it's gonna be leads and brand awareness. So if you don't have a strategy with a goal of what you want to accomplish, you won't be able to create strong ads. So develop your game plan first, which is what we're doing here. So step one of your strategy, it needs to be an awareness campaign and your Facebook objective here is gonna be traffic. So there are gonna be website click ads, which can be a video, image, or slideshow. Most of the time, people are not going to buy from a company they've only heard of once. This is true everywhere, but most, most true on the Internet. <laughs> There's a few ways to do this, but my suggestion is writing a blog post on your website that discusses your audience's biggest pain point or the pain point that you want to focus on. And then you can use that as an ad to get, that, to get your business in front of them first. Works out great because there's no risk for the reader. They're just clicking on the ad to read an article. But also because it shows that you as a company know what you're doing. And approaching it this way first usually creates a lower cost per click for you as it seems like more people are willing to click on articles as opposed to ads that are going to a form fill. 
people are smart. They know what they're clicking on. Other forms of awareness ads that tend to work well, I'm going to go to some examples here, are simply creating a video about your company or even creating a contest. A contest will give you the added bonus there of getting their email addresses, allowing you to follow up via email. But really, I would re recommend doing a blog post like this first example here. After a storm hits, many homeowners aren't sure where to begin to get repairs made. Here's what to do before and after contacting your insurance company. It leads them to a blog post. Now, the blog post is probably going to give some information on your company, but it shouldn't have a form fill or a direct call to action on it. It should be information, pure and simple. Now your budget for these ads can be very low. I'd recommend a budget of around $5 per day, but of course you can increase that if you'd like to reach even more people. The amount of people you're going to reach is going to increase with the amount of money you put towards it. So now that we've given your audience something of value and they've seen your business before, it's time to come back with a round of ads and get them to become a lead. Based on the pain point your blog post covered, you'll know that everyone who clicked on that ad is interested or at least interested in learning more about that particular service of yours. For example, if your blog post was about what someone can do if they have a leaky roof, the next step there is to serve everyone who read this blog post an ad about your roof repair services or an ad for a free roof inspection. These ads are generally going to have a higher budget because it does cost more to get a lead than it does to get someone to read your blog post. Now, there are three ad types that you could use here. A website click ad with a conversions objective as opposed to a traffic objective will send people to a landing page with a form so you can collect their information. Now, the other two I recommend are lead ads and messenger ads. Lead ads utilize a form built into Facebook. This is what it looks like. So they'll click on whatever the button says, sign up, contact us, whatever you'd like to say. It'll then take them to this form, which Facebook auto-populates with their information. So it's just one less barrier for them to fill out the form. They submit the form. They get a thank you page of the form, which will tell them the next steps. And you can customize this to say whatever you want. The image that appears at the top of your form is going to be the same image or video that you use in your ad. So in my experience, this will give you the best return on your ad spend. Because of the fact that they don't have to leave the Facebook platform, they don't have to go to another web page, and their information is auto-filled, like you see here. And the good thing is these Facebook lead forms do integrate with most CRM systems, and if they don't integrate with the CRM system you use, you can always download a spreadsheet with all of the lead information. You can do this daily, you can do this weekly, however you want to look at these leads. Now, messenger ads here are another option. The call to action for these ads is always going to have that messenger icon. Other than that, it can say, I think there are three options, learn more, send message, contact us. But it'll show that messenger icon so people know that when they click it, it's going to open a conversation in Messenger. So at this point, you can set up a Facebook autoresponder, like you see here, that directs them to email you for a faster response or call you for a faster response. You can say whatever you'd like to say in this autoresponder. I'd recommend that if you go this route to have someone regularly checking Facebook Messenger so they can be following up on these conversations in near real time. So there's also an option to create a messenger bot and integrate that with Facebook and integrate that with your ad. But I'm not going to get into that today because it could take an hour or more to show you how to get that set up. And really out of these, I would recommend the lead form or a website click ad. So the next step in the ad process is going to be to create your target audience. Now, none of this is going to work right if you're not utilizing Facebook's targeting features. And again, I'm going to break this up into the two steps for you, awareness and lead generation. For your awareness ad, there's going to be two ways that I'm recommending you target people. The first way is going to be location and interest targeting. So in this step, you want to set your 
main service area city with a radius, or you can enter zip codes. So if you only serve certain zip codes, enter them in here. You won't have the radius option anymore, but it'll show through all those zip codes. You do want to then pay attention to the age. Now you want to get the average age of homeowners. I wouldn't start at 18, which is where it automatically starts. You want to move it up to 25 or even 35. And then go down to the detail targeting. And this is where you're going to be able to target based on interest. And the one thing I recommend you put in here is homeowner. And if you want to narrow that down even more, you can click that highlighted narrow audience and it'll bring up more detail targeting. So it'll show to people who are homeowners and whatever you choose here. So you can target people who are homeowners and they're interested in home improvement or they're interested in renovation or they're interested in HGTV, anything like that. And that'll just narrow your audience to get an even more targeted. So the next option is to create lookalike audiences. These work really well when you have an existing customer list or a prospect list. All you have to do is upload your list in your business. So in your business manager account, you can navigate over to the audiences tool and click create audience, which will then let you choose create a custom audience. And then you'll see here, you'll choose customer file and you'll be able to upload your file, name the audience. And then from there, you follow the same process, but when you get to create a new audience, you're gonna choose lookalike instead of custom audience. And that's when you'll get here under source, you're gonna create the custom audience that you just set up, and then you can refine it by your location parameters. So you're gonna be able to target a lookalike audience of your customers in your zip code. So the goal with these audiences and the awareness ads in general is to create an audience of warm prospects for your lead ads. And you do all of this through the Facebook pixel, and I'm gonna show you how to set that up a little bit later. But now I'm gonna show you how you can set up your warm audience based on your awareness ad. So when you create an audience for your lead ad, you want everyone who viewed the page that your awareness ad sent them to. So you're gonna to go to the same audiences tool, create a custom audience, and choose website traffic here. Based on your Facebook pixel, you'll be able to create an audience based on everyone who visited the specific URL. And using this audience, or any custom audience, when you're creating ads at the ad level, you still wanna set the location parameters because someone could have gotten to that page that doesn't live in your service area and you really don't want them to come into your system as a lead. Now another option here is to upload an email list, which I briefly went through the process, but you can see it in more detail here. Make sure you select in the origin of your upload that your prospects provided you this information. You always wanna make sure that's checked. And if you want to reach even more people with your lead ads, you could target the same interest targeting as your awareness ad, but I do have to tell you the cost will be higher because if they haven't seen your awareness ad yet, they don't know who your business is and they are so much less likely to click on the ad and give you their information. So the next step of the process is to choose ad placements. These are all the options right here. You can choose mobile only, desktop only. You can show it on both desktop and mobile. You'll have multiple options on Facebook, several on Instagram, on Messenger, and then in the audience network. And the audience network is a network of apps and websites that partner with Facebook, so Facebook's able to show ads on them. You can run ads with almost all placement options selected, or you can disable and enable only certain ones. If you choose at, to run ads on Instagram stories or Facebook stories, and those are new features, if you've seen them in Instagram or Facebook, they're really cool when they pop up, but they are a different image or video size than normal ads. So I'd recommend that you create a separate campaign specifically for those story ads. So other than that, I would start out using all the placements. You can monitor the results and decide if you need to make any changes. Most of the times, I would say you won't, but because it's better to show the ad everywhere where a potential customer can interact with it. So now we're ready to create the actual copy and creative of the ad. 
And when you get ready to create your ad copy and images, think of this formula. Awareness, interest, desire, action. Your ad copy should follow, should flow in this direction. But before you create this ad, you need to think, what is your offer? What are you offering people in this ad? You need a compelling offer for these Facebook and Instagram ads, one that's relevant to the Facebook user seeing it. And this goes back to tailoring your offer and the whole ad to the content of the awareness ad that you were running. The offer has to have a high value and it has to be easy to claim. Some examples here are a free in-home consultation with 25% off your purchase. Or if you do roofing and gutters, maybe offer free gutter cleaning with a roof inspection. Think of your compelling offer as your foot in the door and your means to capturing a new lead contact information. The key here really is to create an offer so compelling that it gets your ideal prospect to want to contact you right away. Come up with something worthwhile to the customer that will introduce them to your company and set them up to be a lifetime customer and end up making larger purchases. So in the instance of a roofing company offering a free gutter cleaning. Basically, if you think of it backwards, you all think of, hey, you want a customer that needs a new roof installation. But before the new roof installation, they might need a roof repair or two. And what comes before that is gutters, whether they need um, their gutters replaced, gutters clean, or their gutters cleaned, it's all gonna start with a free inspection and an estimate. It's all gonna start with you getting in the door. And if gutter cleaning is your lowest cost option to offer them to get in the door, then you might become their lifetime company for gutters and roofing services. So the first step is to create ad copy that gets your prospects to take action. It's to get, the, it's to get them to pay attention. To do this, you need to call out who your ideal prospect is, and this will get them to stop scrolling and to continue to read the rest of your ad. For example, attention homeowners or got a leaky roof, anything really that calls out to who they are, something that'll get them to stop. And next is where your prospect gets interested in your message by getting them to relate to a certain pain point, and then you can get them to desire your solution and your company by showing them a picture of what they could get with you. And that ties into a lot of the creative, the image and the video that you're gonna show them is really gonna paint a picture for them. And then the final step is to make a clear call to action, one that displays urgency and guides them to take action. You can literally say, click the button below to claim the offer. Give people clear directions and expectations. It may seem redundant because the button is supposed to tell them what to do, but click rates do decrease when you don't include instructions like this in your ad copy. So the last component is the image, slideshow, or video. And this video here, this is Mark Richardson. He is one of our consultants, and he's an expert in the remodeling space. He does a time mastery workshop with us, and this is just a video of him. I just showed it in here as an example. So when you're talking about images, you want to use high quality images only. You're paying for Facebook to show this image to people, so you really need to represent your business in the best possible light. But video is always better than an image, and you can create a video on your smartphone. From my experience, a smartphone video actually performs on par, if not better, than a highly produced video. It's more personal and it really fits in nicely with people's Facebook and Instagram news feeds. So they feel less like they're being served an ad and more like it's organic content there on Facebook. So Steve's gonna put a link into the chat box here for you. I created a two page guide on how you can create a simple and effective video. And it's really full of great tips, so please take a look at it. And I wanted to tell you another great resource for creating captivating images and even GIFs is Canva. It's full of templates that you can work from, so I highly recommend checking it out. And a couple image types or video types I'm gonna recommend before and after always works really well. Um, a company story video, that could be really great for an awareness ad. 
Or if a homeowner gives you approval, you can take a before and after video in their home. You can take a video of your job in progress. You can get review testimonial videos, and those all work really well. So the last step in this whole process is to make sure you're getting the most bang for your advertising dollar spent. The truth is, after you've ran an awareness ad and a lead generation ad, the majority of people that see your ad just are not going to take you up on an offer the first time. It's totally normal and it's nothing to get concerned about. And the solution here in order to get more people to claim your offer and become a new lead for your business is to implement remarketing. Remarketing is just a fancy term used to explain the act of showing someone another ad if they didn't take action the first time around. Kind of, you're kind of doing that already with the lead generation ad after the awareness ad, but you need to keep, keep remarketing to them with fresh ads. Having fresh content is key here, whether it's a fresh ad every month or if you choose to do a fresh ad every few months, keeping it fresh will definitely increase your engagement and results. So to do this, you need to set up your Facebook pixel. And this is what it's going to look like in your business manager account. Um, this is what the homepage of your pixel looks like. It'll show you your website activity. So I put it actually going to put a link here in the chat box as well. It's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions in case my instructions here don't really cover everything. But in the business manager, navigate to the pixel tool and click create a pixel. Or if you already have them created but you haven't installed it on your website, it'll look like this and you have to click set up that area that I have highlighted in a red box. And then from there, you're going to click, they're going to give you a pixel code that you need to place in the header of your entire website. Now, if you're working with a partner, you can send it to them and ask them to install it. But like I said, put a link into the chat box. It's going to walk you through it in more detail. So this is what it'll show you. Manually install the pixel code yourself. And it'll give you the actual code, which you can copy and paste right from there onto your website. And from here, you can create basically any audience you can think of. You can make an audience of all your website visitors. You can make an audience of people who have visited a specific page, people who visit a thank you page. You could even create an audience that excludes people. So you could take all website visitors except for those that viewed a thank you page. So that would effectively being everyone who hasn't become a lead yet. So two types of remarketing ads that I'd recommend. You can target prospects who are in the sales funnel, but you haven't been able to schedule uh, inspection or estimate yet. And you can target those who saw your ad but didn't convert the first time. So I would recommend creating these audiences once a month and sending them new ads because you're going to get new people in every month and you have to keep hitting them with ads. Make sure you use a different ad than you did the first time around though, so it's fresh for them. So for prospects in the sales funnel, I'd recommend doing something like a testimonial video of a happy customer, or you could even do promotional messages to them. And for those who saw your first ad but didn't end up converting, I would keep trying different offers, different promotional messages with them. Uh, maybe once, maybe send them one ad with a testimonial, but mostly I would just send them new offers. So finally here, I want to talk to you about how Google Ads and Facebook and Instagram ads really work together. They're all powerhouses in their own right, don't get me wrong. Between the three, people spend 75% of their online time on these three sites. But they shouldn't be competitors in your marketing strategy. Combining the two is a far more effective way to push awareness and sales. And if you integrate your advertising on the two platforms, you will likely see higher views, higher clicks, and higher conversions. In fact, customers who click both social and search ads are two times more likely to convert than users who just click on an ad in one platform. And a recent study showed that paid search audiences who were exposed to both Facebook advertising and search advertising generated a 30% improvement in return on ad spend. 
and a 7% increase in the click-through rate. So that means you're getting more clicks who are more likely to convert if you're pulling information from Facebook and Google and really helping them work together. It also means that the ad formats you select on either platform should mirror each other in objective. If I can go to my next slide here. <laughs> you, so you'll see here, you have awareness at the top of the funnel. Like we talked about, awareness ads, using lookalike audiences, and interest targeting in Facebook. Comparatively, on Google, that's going to look like unbranded search ads with um, demographic with in, with uh, location targeting, sorry, and YouTube ads. So if you create a video for your Facebook ad, I'd recommend running that on YouTube as well. Then you come down to consideration and conversion. I put a smaller divide in between these. They can sort of run together sometimes. On Facebook, this is going to look like your lead generation ads, the messenger ads, lead ads, the website conversion ads. On Google, this looks like call-only ads. It looks like Gmail ads, which I'm sure you've seen in your own inboxes. They come up in the, if you use Gmail, they come up in the promotions and the social tabs. And branded search, which is bidding on your company's name as a search term. So these people already know your business. You're familiar to them. They might even be searching specifically for your business. And then maintain and expand here is going to be your remarketing ads. It's going to be uploading these customer lists. So say you upload your prospect list. That's going to be a remarketing ad. And I would say here you also want to continue running awareness ads. People who move to your location, if you keep running the awareness ad, they're going to see it right away because they live there now and Facebook knows that. So you're always trying to get new people in at the top of the funnel. And since these awareness ads really are a much lower budget ad, you can run this all the time. And every two weeks, every month, you can add to your audience of people who have clicked on this ad. Again, I would recommend refreshing this awareness ad every couple of months. Say you're, you have a seasonal thing, like a storm, you want to run a blog post about what you can, what you can do for your house if there's a storm. That awareness ad is relevant during that time period, but once that time period is over, you need to change it to something along the lines of spring cleaning. How do you clean the gutters by yourself and run them to a blog post like that instead? So here you also have a huge opportunity to leverage search query data. It's one of the greater benefits of doing a cross-channel marketing strategy like this so in Google, users are typing exactly what they're looking for into the search engine, and you can use that information to better target and optimize your ads on both search and social. So one way you can do that is to use specific search keywords to better tailor your ad copy. So if in Google Ads, sorry, I'm just taking a sip of water. So in Google Ads, if you see that users are clicking on your search ads after searching for specific queries, you could use those search terms to form more relevant social ads. You can also use Facebook and Instagram to retarget users from search ads. Basically, if someone found your website or a specific landing page of yours through a search ad, you can use what they searched for to target them with a highly specified ad on Facebook. First, ensure that your Google Ads are sending users to unique landing pages. And since these landing pages will be set up with the Facebook pixel code, you'll be able to create custom audiences of people who have visited these specific pages tied to your Google Ads. Sometimes these audience can skip the awareness ad phase since they've already interacted with you on Google and went, been, been to your website, and they can go right to lead generation ads. But it might be best to show them both depending on how quickly you want to get them converted. So there's my Facebook and Instagram advertising strategy in a nutshell. To sum it up for you, here are my nine takeaways. So your first campaign and an ongoing campaign should be an awareness ad. And once you've built a warm audience with that, 
you could start running a lead generation campaign to those people. And like I was just saying, make a new audience of everyone who's clicked on these this awareness app about every month. You could do it every two weeks if you wanted to, but I would say about every month. Third point here is video ads get the best engagement and results. Video is the king of content on the internet today, and it will be for some time in the future. I had a stat about how much internet traffic is on video. It was very high, it was a very high percent, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. So definitely create video ads. Next, install the Facebook pixel on your website. Custom audiences are where it's at for getting the best results from Facebook. So you need the pixel, you need to be creating these audiences, and you need to be sending them specific lead ads to these audiences. And the other way you can do this is uploading customer and prospect lists. Next thing is your ad creative should follow the awareness, interest, desire, action formula. And the copy should read in that order as well. Your images should also follow this, or videos. They have to capture their attention. They have to create interest, show the solution. And if you're using a video, tell them in the video what you want them to do. Remarketing is really helpful in converting prospects who didn't convert the first time. And you can do that because Google and Facebook work together. And when Google and Facebook work together, it means big results for your business. And online advertising is only a part of your overall digital strategy. It depends on your website, your landing pages, your reviews and ratings, your web content, blog posts organic social media strategy, online listings, so on. So how are you able to manage this? As a business owner, you likely don't have a lot of time to keep an eye on and develop your digital marketing strategy. Partnering with a digital marketing expert can be a huge help in a cohesive strategy, allowing you to focus on running your business, closing sales that come in through marketing, and any of the countless important things that you need to focus on. And it's really even better if you can access all the information on one single platform, like our Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. It's really the first local marketing automation platform built specifically for home improvement companies, like roofers, HVAC companies, remodeling companies. What it really helps doing is driving business visibility across all the key channels on the web, it's a consistent way to store and view data in the cloud versus a multi-service vendor-based data that changes as your vendors change. And it leverages the best of breed local marketing partners and products in one easy to use platform here. It really pulls everything together in one place. And it's always optimized with the latest tools, technologies, and strategies for local search. And that's organic and paid. And overall, digital marketing and lead generation becomes simplified and cost-effective because you're able to take as much control as you can or you have a digital marketing strategist that can work with you and carry the rent of that. So before we get on to the Google Home Hub winner, I wanted to ask if you would be interested in learning our top practices to help decrease your cost per lead. Along with this, we'll show you a demo of our platform and answer any questions that you may have. So we're scheduling calls with our digital marketing experts on either Wednesday or Thursday of this week so that you can take all the information you learned today and further develop your personalized marketing strategy. So the poll's open. Take a second to pick a time. Okay, so while you're filling out the poll, I wanted to announce our Google Home Hub winner. And today's winner is Stevie Huff from PAR1 Construction. Congratulations, Stevie. Please send your full mailing address to marketing at surefirelocal.com and we will get that shipped right out to you. So I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who is on the webinar today. I hope you learned something new and I would also like to hear from you. Any feedback you have for me, send it along. There's a survey at the end here. Once we close out the webinar, please fill out the survey and let me know how we did today. 
And if there are any specific topics that you'd really like to hear about in the future, we'd love to take a look at those topics that you suggest when we're planning out our future webinar schedule. So with that, thank you, and I hope you all have a great day.